This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com. Canine crew, it's time to just sell the damn thing. Doberman Dan is revealing his contrarian formula for getting a rush of new customers, building your business faster, and making the highest possible profits. Go to JustSellTheDamnThing.com to get your copy today. Prepare yourself for the uncensored, nothing held back, no BS reality of how business and life really work. Doberman Dan is off the chain. How's it going, Joe Nation? Could not be better, man. Third show in a row with Doberman Dan leading the way. Yeah, no no guests again. Until people get sick of me again. I was just checking my email before we started, and I was like handed the perfect, the perfect lead. For this episode, here's the here's the subject line. Ninety eight percent of the population isn't ready. Are you? Let me see. What do we got here? Could you bear the thought of your family dying in a major disaster from potential government collapse to Ebola outbreaks, wiping out mass populations? The the sad, unfortunate fact is ninety eight percent of people won't be able to survive on their own. Yada, yada, yada. So I'm being pitched. Uh, let me see what I'm being. I live off the grid without any modern day technology. Perfect your hunting and fishing skills to truly live off the land. Learn secret hacks to ensure your family can survive any disaster. I thought this was like the perfect lead. We're talking disasters of biblical proportions, Jonathan. I'm scared Which, now. Here's why it ties in. So I stole a story. Speaking of biblical, I stole a story for today's episode, which I'm entitling Huge Convergence. Actually, I entitled it Huge Convergence, or Conversions, excuse me, pr- pronouncing the H, unlike a lot of people on TV do. Well, one person in particular who says huge. So I guess, I don't know, maybe. Gonna be huge. Let's change the title. Change the title instead of Huge Conversions. Let's change it to Huge Conversions. So. A story stolen from an ancient text on my personal quote. I'm doing finger quotes. We need to, we need video, Jonathan. On my personal road to Damascus, finger quotes, I had a finger quotes again, Saul to Paul conversion. Actually, numerous Saul to Paul conversions. Say what? You thought I was speaking of conversions in the, in the sense of, uh, of online marketing or sales, right? <laughs> nope, nope, nope. I'm talking about Saul to Paul conversions today, my brothers and sisters. Can I get an amen? Amen. So, so, my dear brethren, and what is the name for, since we now have to be, you know, we can't just speak in the masculine or we offend half the population. So, brethren obviously refers to men. What do we call the women? Cistern? I thought a cistern was a place for dirty well water or pooping water. Okay, so whatever, we'll, we'll go with that. So my brother, my brethren and cistern, you don't, you say you don't know who Saul is. More, more, more appropriately, who Saul was. I mean, like Judas H. Priest, you ruined my whole shtick. Now it's, now it's like explaining the punchline of a joke. So whatever, here goes. Saul of Tarsus was a Pharisee who hated followers of this brand new, freaky, 60s-ish, you know, hippie, long hair religion called Christianity. A a Pharisee, by the way, was a member of an ancient Jewish sect, distinguished by their strict observance of the traditional and written law. So they believe themselves to be the chosen among the chosen and have some kind of superior sanctity or whatever. And so Saul was one of those guys. He also despised all of L. Ron Hubbard's fiction books, but that's a story for another time. Anywho, Saul believed that he was serving God. That was his mission to find Christians, throw them into prison, and even execute them when that was possible. I mean, he was so evil. He would strap Christians to school chairs and make them listen to him scratching his fingernails on a chalkboard. He would, he would, this guy was pure evil, man. He would even sneak into their homes while they were at work 
and hide their TV remote control in weird places. He did all that sick shit like that. What a screwball. The guy, I'm telling you, was evil. And as if all that wasn't evil enough, Saul made it his life's goal to capture and bring Christians to public trial and execution. I mean, he was the most zealous of the Christian persecutors of his time. And the, just the mention of his name caused Christians everywhere to pee their pants. So obviously I'm taking a little artistic license with the story. Don't, don't have a <laughs> freaking cow, man, you know? <laughs> So, so for example, Saul was there giving his approval when the first Christian martyr, Stephen, was killed by an angry mob. So, so not being satisfied with that, after Stephen was martyred, Saul went door to door disguised as an Avon lady. I mean, just, yeah, evil, but brilliant evil, you know? So he went door to door disguised as an Avon lady in Jerusalem, knocking on doors, looking for people who believed that Jesus was the Messiah. And then... Of course, after selling them a big bunch of Avon products, he put them all in prison, got a hell of a commission check from Avon and accomplished his goal of putting Christians in prison. I'm telling you, man, this was a dude on a mission and he was sneaky, too. He intercepted letters sent to all the poor bastards he imprisoned and discovered that many were receiving letters from Christian friends and family members in Damascus. So armed with arrest warrants for those Folks, those poor Christian folk, he headed off to Damascus to continue his bloody mission of savagery, savagery, if that's even a word. And, you know, all that other stick shit, like hiding their TV remote control where they couldn't find it. (laughs) However, something happened as he traveled to Damascus. According to his, I'm not, uh, his own writings, according to Saul himself, a light brighter than the midday sun suddenly engulfed him in a big ass booming voice that sounded like that voiceover guy in all the movies who always says in a world, you know, that guy sound like him. This voice says to him, Saul, Saul, dude, why are you being such a dick? What did I ever do to piss you off? I must've done something because you continue to persecute me, Holmes. Listen, (laughs) Just because I read and study books on brain surgery doesn't make me a brain surgeon. And it's, it's probably blatantly obvious I ain't no biblical scholar either. So so pipe down and cut me a little slack, all right? I'm, I am simply relaying the story how I remember it, okay? Onward. <laughs> so Saul responded, dude, who are you? And the voice responded back, you know me, yo. I'm the cat whose peeps you've been persecuting and tossing in jail. And I'm not paying all those attorney fees, bro. It's your fault, so you better cough up some cash to cover these legal bills. Saul was in shock, frozen in place. And then then the voice continued. Look, these blood-sucking attorneys are breathing down my neck. And you know how these sharks are, man. If I don't pay up soon, they'll sue me for everything I own. And that's a whole freaking universe for me, say. So, So Saul made a mental note that uh, he would never again smoke that pungent smelling plant, the organic vegetable seller where the dreadlocks sold him. While the voice continued, look, dude, I'll just have my dad pay off those blood sucking bastards for now. And then you and I can discuss how you're going to reimburse me, man. I freaking hate those guys. Yeah. Yeah. You heard me right. I, Jesus H Christ, hate lawyers. But Saul, on to business, you need to go into Damascus. Hang out there for a while, and I'll get back to you soon. And one more thing. I hope you brought a seeing eye dog. And just like that, it was like, bam, Alakazam, Saul was blind. I have no idea how he found his way to Damascus. I don't, I, I don't remember the, this, the story covering that part. I, I like <laughs> to imagine that my dear departed Donner, Donner the Doberman, his angel led Saul there. Somehow, in between chasing all the squirrels along the way. Anywho, somehow we got there. And then Saul spent the next three agonizing days fasting and praying. So finally, Ananias, this freelance copywriter who was in between client gigs, you know, didn't have anything better to do. He was selected by God to carry a message to Saul because I guess God felt like, uh, you know, if I got to rely on somebody to carry a message, I guess, you know, maybe a copywriter is the best choice for it. So Ananias shows up restores Saul's sight and commanded him as the messenger from God, bro, you ain't Saul anymore. 
So quit persecuting all those nice, but simple, and I emphasize simple, Christian folks. Why don't you travel and meet some new people instead of hanging out with all those stuffy old Pharisees and Sadducees and maybe write a book or something? Oh, and, and by the way, change your name to Paul. Saul sounds too Jewish. That was Ananias' message from God to Saul. And the rest, <laughs> as they say, is history. Good story, right? Yeah, excellent. I'm, I just got this cartoon in my mind. Why did we not animate this? I will, maybe we should. Let's turn this into a, an animated episode. So you may be asking, what's my point? Here it is. My dear, devoted listener. Listen, if a heinous dude like Saul can make that dramatic of a transformation, what's to prevent you from making just about any kind of transformation you desire in your life, your business, your income, whatever? Nothing, honey. Maybe, maybe, just maybe. The only thing that could prevent you from making that kind of huge conversion like Saul, then Paul, is maybe not having the help and guidance you need. So I did it on my own for the longest time. And I made so many mistakes, you know, and had had to learn so much of this stuff the stuff the hard way. You know, and I had to pull myself up by my bootstraps because I went broke <laughs> time after time after time. And if, if you're probably sick of the story, but even the worst time winding up homeless and living in my 12-year-old beat to shit for Taurus. And like four months later, making four or five months later, something like that. Definitely not more than five months. I, I go from homeless, penniless to making six figures a month. So believe me, I've traversed the minefield you're stuck in. I got blown up a lot and I've got the scars to prove it. There's no reason for you to keep stepping on minds. Seek out and search the help, the guidance, whatever you want to call it, the coaching you need. Now, blatant pitch for me, I believe that I provide that to my knights in the Marketing Camelot. So, you know, check that deal out at marketingcamelot.com. Although I do, you know, so I'll let you know a little secret. If you buy my book at Just Sell the Damn Thing, Dot com. The first upsell you will be presented is a 30 day trial in the marketing Camelot for for half off the regular price. So that's one way to try it out. Wow. But regardless, if you become a knight in my marketing Camelot is your way of seeking out help to make your own personal Saul to Paul conversion or you seek out somebody else who has the proven track record, who has done what what uh, successfully numerous times what you want to do, however you go about it, my, my brethren and sister <laughs> seek out the help you need. That's, you know, right before we were recording, I got on uh, a call with one of my buddies that I did a podcast with. And he asked me like, what was my biggest lesson lately? Or what, what was I working on? And I, I told him that the biggest mistake I made was not putting myself in the room or paying to have access to the right people. So rather than buying courses, rather than buying books, rather than any of that, I would have, if I was smart, got in the, the right environment, kind of like the marketing Camelot to help me move quicker than I did on my own. Yeah, there's there's so much to to being mentored. And I get it, man. I mean, like personal mentorship with a, a, a coach with a proven track record. There's a lot of people who hang out their shingle as a coach who have never been successful with what they're coaching people on. So, you know, I, I have a problem with that. I don't understand yeah. that. Like thinking. Raffam, Scraffam. Yeah, exactly. The Raffam, Fraffam, Scraffam, <laughs> Wazoo, like Mr. Fleming, you know, or the, or the guy who, the, the guy I know who couldn't ever get his own business to work, but he starts a Facebook group now anointing himself as an online marketing expert. And I got to give him credit. He built a big group of people paying him a, a couple hundred bucks a month to be part of that Facebook group. But what's not known by any of those people is he he failed at starting his own online business. He he didn't have any past history. His, the only success he had was starting the Facebook group, positioning himself as an internet marketing guru. So, you know, you, you got to be selective. It's all it takes, bro. <laughs> 
You're doing it wrong, Dan. That's the problem. I don't hate. Man, oh man, <laughs> the decades I went through of pain and torture to build a, multiple successful businesses. I, I didn't know the shortcut. Just anoint myself uh, an internet marketing guru and, and sell coaching for $1,000. No, really for a proven entity, somebody with a proven track record. I, I get it that personal mentorship is either extremely difficult to obtain or extremely expensive to obtain. I mean, there's there's definitely reasons that it's both difficult and expensive. But, you know, if the best you can do is to be mentored by someone in print or, you know, through that kind of instruction, then do that. There's no reason for you to go it alone. I agree, bro. Buy the shortcut, whatever that shortcut is. Absolutely. I All I right. am done on that topic. I, I got nothing more to say. What do you got next time? What I got next time? I, well, I've started my death countdown. I'm going to talk <laughs> about that. Oh, K9 crew, I know you'll be back for that one. We'll see you next time. Another Off the Chain show is in the can. K9 crew, before you run off, I want to remind you, Doberman Dan has set up an Off the Chain hotline. Call in, tell us you love us. It's even better if you tell us you hate us. It doesn't matter what you say. All you have to do is call in, leave a message. The number is 321-424-6043. Again, off the chain hotline, 321-424-6043. This is the podcastfactory.com.